Hello, my SMVs. This is Satellite Media. Let's all look at the issue involving Samurai Bar in Finland. This time around, we are seeing a development in Punch newspaper saying terrorism. It says Finnish court sets May 2025 deadline for Ebba's trial. If we go further, it's saying Pro Biafra agitator Samurai Ebba, who was arrested in Finland for alleged terrorism related activities, is scheduled to face charges in May 2025. We shall look at it further, but let us first of all look at another development coming from someone who we understand according to information on the media in the media space took over from someone by talking about Ngozi or Abuzi, who we understand she is in the United States of America. She is coming up with another development encouraging the Biafrans to start writing to Finnish government in what according to her looked like a way of trying to correct an erroneous impression. But according to her some persons are writing damaging letter to Finnish authorities. But allow we listen to her, then we'll come back and do a proper analysis on this. Thank you. Some people just people talking whatever they don't know. You all have heard it from our honorable butcher who is based in Finland. He gave the accurate picture of what is happening and we stand by that. We are encouraging difference because the information is that some some um, criminal people, we are the ones that were writing different letters to the Finnish local authorities. So we are calling on their friends at this moment. If you have the access, start writing immediately to the Finnish local authorities. Let them know that what we are doing is what United Nations has given us the right to do. The right to self-determination. Nobody can take that away from us. We have met all the criteria to be a nation. We have a geographical area. We have the 40 states in Biafra with all the administrators in charge in Poland. We are, have created alliances with nations. We have all these are working for us. We've met all the criteria as a nation. They killed us before, between 1967 and 1970. After the war, they gave all their friends only 20 pounds. Regardless of how much you have in your bank account, some Biafras have millions of dollars, millions of pounds in their account. But this wicked, stinable Nigerian government and his colleagues, they get Biafras, every single Biafra, only 20 pounds after the war. And what has that 20 pounds done? That 20 pounds have made Biafras all over the world the best in what they do. So nobody can stop that. On that note, I want to thank you all, dear friends. Be resolute. Let nothing shake you. Let nobody move you. And our declaration will happen in Finland between November 29th and December 3rd, 2024. And thank you all so much for listening to us and being able to know that nothing shakes, nothing moves. We must restore Biafra by 7 December. Thank you so much, everyone. So you are welcome back. Let us look at this uh, particular issue, uh, particularly from the angle of uh, how to enhance a peaceful environment in a society. I'm looking at for I'm looking at it from the angle of what shall constitute the primary purpose of governance. Of course, the welfare of the people and the security of the people. Because if you look at the concern of the Federal Republic of Nigeria section. 14 subsection 2b of that constitution is very clear that the welfare of nigerians and their security shall be the primary purpose of governance so what i'm drawing this inference is we are looking at the security of the size of the country the welfare of the people vis-a-vis -vis the contentious issue now if the government understand based on all the stakeholders, almost every stakeholders in the country have spoken in this direction, that the best way to have a good, peaceful environment in that region is to engage in conversation. And uh, another one is to ensure that Anna Kalo is released. That we have seen different stakeholders coming out to speak on. 
the last is coming, is coming from Senator Ina Baribe, who has spoken widely on it before now. Of course, we understand that even when Anana Nkalo needed someone to stand for him for bail, it was the same as Baribe that stood for him. But the point is, if everybody has spoken in this direction that we actually need a peaceful environment, and the only way it can be achieved is through conversation on the round table. So by extension, I think it is wise that the government should look at how best to achieve this. Because even Senator Ned Moko have said recently, where he said arrest and 100,000 Samoan people will emerge. And it all looked like his uh, position coming to fulfillment. We have seen someone, I talk about Ngozi Arabusi, who have come up to say, yes, she's for now piloting the affairs of the agitation. And one thing you cannot take away is you can accuse someone of violence. But one thing you cannot take away is people have right of self-determination. It's entrenched in the Nigerian constitution. Though it's a UN charter, but hence it has been ratified in Nigeria, it's already a law in our legal jurisprudence. Because recently we saw how about uh, 19 governors, state governors in Nigeria, draft federal government to court over the legality of ESCC, ICPC, and financial intelligence units. Because according to them, it was a UN charter. It, was, it didn't have concurrent of state houses of assembly as required by law in Nigeria to become a law. As such, they demanded that the Supreme Court should determine whether they are, those agencies of government is legal or not. But in the wisdom of the Supreme Court, they heard that hence is a convention and not a charter that it is a law and is binding on all the states. One I'm drawing this difference is if you don't have a UN charter that talks about self-determination and it has been ratified in Nigeria in the same vein, it is a law in Nigeria. And to that extent, if somebody is relying on it to talk about self-determination, so long as the person is doing it with the ambience of the law, it's not going about it violently, the person will not have committed any known crime both locally and internationally. But beyond all this, I think what is important at this point is how do we have a peaceful environment? Because there is no meaningful development that can go on in a rancor environment, in a violent prone environment. There is no meaningful development that can go on. The best bet, the best way to have development is where you have a peaceful environment. And again, I think the age long issue of marginalization of the people need to be addressed. Because for me, it is something that is fueling this agitation. We have seen the last administration of Mahmoud Bari, how things were skewed against the Igbos. You cannot take that away. We saw about 17 key positions in the security. They were not given anyone. Even in this current administration, they are accommodated, but not to the extent of satisfying further character in the constitution. Because the further character, France at a situation where you give a position and it do not reflect the grass spread. I'm talking about 70 position this time around, and the only one that goes to the southeastern part of the country, the Igbos, is the chief of Naval Staff. So if you are to just oppose that without further character, of course, for me, it is not fair and it is no other, there's no other way to describe it than to see its marginalization. And if you look at uh, after the war, the issue of uh, no, no Vitor, no Vanquish was a popular slogan of the federal government. By the end of the day, we saw the government giving the Igbos 20 pounds, irrespective of whatever amount they had in the banks. So that in itself is pure marginalization. And the third hour that the government fronted then, I'm talking about rehabilitation, reintegration, and reconstruction. I don't think the government followed through to do any of this. Because all the war ravaged communities in the South East the country were never reconstructed by federal government. And the Igbos were never reintegrated properly into Nigerian states. So we have seen so many areas where they have cried out in areas where they have been marginalized. So the best bet if the government hope to address it is to ensure that 
you address all these issues that give right to uh, the civil war in the first place and secondly to ensure that they are integrated into the nigerian states and again i think there's every need for nigeria to call for if you call it sovereign national conference you may be, you, are, you are not wrong if you call it national discourse you are not wrong if you call it constant assembly you may not be wrong as well but the important thing is the federal government should provide a roundtable conversation for people to add their views for people to spread their grievance so at the end of the day they can come to compromise and address all this issue because don't forget that today we are seeing their friends agitating but i just said it the other time that the Igbos were not the first to call for division of the country. Of course, the Hausa did so in the past when we had the issue of Araba. And we are seeing the likes of Sunday Bo coming up from this axis of uh, southwestern part of the country, saying they want their own Oduduwa Republic. Recently, we saw him approach the uh, British government, the office of the Prime Minister of Britain, to submit in data in that regard. Though the British have spoken and encouraged him to join hand with other Nigerians. To move the country forward but that is not the, the point the point is the agitation is there and we equally saw britain itself when the, there was need to exit european union we understand that there were opposition to that idea there were some people who supported it but at the end of the day they achieve it by implication it means minority had their say and majority had their way i think the same thing should be encouraged in nigeria in as much as the government will want everybody to be in this country together con nigeria but it must not be true coercion through the barrel of gun so long as the person who is saying i want to leave is doing it within that piece of the law is not doing it violently i think the best bet is for the government to convene a sovereign national conference to have conver conversation around it that way it will be a win-win situation for everyone because by the time of course we had the we had something like confirm in the, in the past Though a Jonathan government did not stay long to see through to the implementation of it. But it's not too late. This government may not be satisfied with the way and manner confab was uh, the result of the confab. So who say they cannot convene their own conference and get a good result that will satisfy everybody? Because if you do it and it's apolitical, you make sure every interest is represented. Of course, if they negotiate Nigeria at that level, I think it will work. Particularly if you have to negotiate it, somebody who represents the interests of Sunday Bo must be on the table. Somebody who represents the interests of Nandekalo and the Igbos must be on the table. And once they get their bargain and accept whatever comes out of that table, I think it will solve or rather settle this age-long issue of agitation. To say otherwise, it will say that agitation will continue. And for agitation to continue, is not doing anybody any good rather it will only result in waste on one on unwarranted waste of life and property like we are seeing in the southeastern part of the country nobody wants waste of life because we understand that life is sacrosanct nobody has what it takes to create life apart from the almighty god so life that you cannot create is not what you can waste when it is avoidable for me all the wastage of life is avoidable if the government do the need for and to do the needful is to have a roundtable conversation to solve all this issue of agitation. I must say very thank you for your time. This is Sunday, and I'm in Samar 20. Call your witness time. Stay blessed.